Does the ultimate feature phone exist? I'm not so sure, but this one might have a shout, at least on paper. This is the Nokia 2780 Flip, a US exclusive feature phone that at a glance looks almost identical to the 2660 Flip. But as always, the devil is in the details. And when you look closer, the 2780 Flip actually fixes most of my complaints that I had about the 2660. It will set you back about 90 US dollars and some retailers outside of the US have begun stocking it up, which is how I got my hands on one. So let's start with the unboxing experience so that by the end of this video, you'll know if this phone is for you or not. The box is fairly simple and pretty unimaginative. Inside, you've got the handset itself, which comes in either blue or red, product and safety booklets, and the wall charger, which actually uses USB-C. Now starting with the hardware, the 2780 comes with a 1.77 inch display on the outside, which showcases the time and very basic notifications. The form factor and overall design is identical to the 2660, but with some minor yet significant changes. And as the name implies, it is a flip phone, and when you flip it open, you're faced with a 2.7 inch display. The buttons are all very large and have excellent tactile feedback, making this a very good option for people who have accessibility needs. The D-pad is also top notch and I honestly don't have any complaints about this keypad. The display though does have very poor viewing angles and don't expect the screen to be super sharp either, but it does the job. On the right you've got the volume rocker keys as well as an emergency button, which you can reassign to an emergency contact, well, in case of emergencies. The thing I'm probably most happy about though is that this comes with a USB-C port for charging. So you don't have to worry about using a separate charger compared to your regular smartphone. On the left, you've got a 3.5 millimeter headphone jack. Above the external display is a five megapixel fixed focus camera and a flashlight. The camera resolution on this device is fairly acceptable at five megapixels compared to a lot of the VGA cameras we've seen on Nokia's other feature phones. Though the software to use it is fairly basic and don't expect any magical processing going on here. It's all very basic stuff. To access the removable battery, you'll need to have the flip form factor closed and you can easily open it using the slight indentation at the bottom. Once you have the device opened up, you can access the 1450 milliamps battery, a single SIM slot and a micro SD slot too, to expand on the memory. And there's a single rear firing speaker on the back panel of the device. The whole phone is made out of polycarbonate plastic, which is typical for such a price point. So don't expect the same premium finish Nokia used to have on their old time devices that you know we've all used, which were significantly more expensive too. Cheap and cheerful is how I'd describe this. And it does feel like it can take a drop or two without having any issues. Unfortunately though, you can't buy the 2780 in a dual SIM configuration like the global 2660, but it does support 4G connectivity and voice over LTE, which is the ability to make HD phone calls. It also runs on a better processor than the 2660. So it uses the Snapdragon 215 processor and comes with 512 megabytes of RAM and four gigabytes of internal storage, which as I mentioned earlier is expandable using an SD card slot. Out of the box, the system takes out about a gigabyte of that. So you're left with about three gigs. Half of that can be used for apps and the other half can be used for media. Though keep in mind that Kai OS, which is the operating system this thing is running on does require more processing power than the S30 Plus platform that most of Nokia's other recent feature phones are running on. I've tested the call quality pretty briefly and it does seem to perform very well, especially considering the price. And the loudspeaker is loud enough though doesn't offer much in terms of clarity. Other notable features is that the phone comes with Bluetooth 4.2, and it also supports Wi-Fi and the ability to use this device as a Wi-Fi hotspot. But unlike the 2660, you won't be able to use the radio functionality without connecting headphones first. Now the 2780 is the first Nokia feature phone to be running on Kai OS 3.1 out of the box. It's still a mystery to me how good this operating system will be to use over a prolonged period of time. But I did notice that it comes with a slightly snappier interface, at least when it comes to day-to-day -day activities. But I've also noticed that it has a smaller selection of apps compared to the previous KaiOS devices that I've used. So for international clients, for example, I couldn't find WhatsApp available for this device. And this might be a deal breaker for you, especially if you're using this as your daily driver without any other device next to it. And the web browser experience is pretty basic, so it won't be able to fully make up for the fact that it lacks certain apps. 
On the other hand, it does have a lot more useful functionality compared to the 2660. So for example, there's a QR reader and you can also use Google Maps on it. Unfortunately though, there are no music streaming apps on this either. So if you're into listening to music, you'll still have to sideload your MP3 files, you know, old school style. Another limitation is that the phone only supports up to 1000 contacts. But luckily it does have the ability to sync your Gmail contacts, which makes your life a bit easier. It also comes with a voice recorder, a note taking app, and you can even access your email on this, which is a big deal and big advantage compared to the 2660. But most importantly, of course, is that it comes with Snake also pre-installed. It runs okay, but I still prefer the more traditional Snake version that's found on the 2660. Now, as for battery life, Nokia is saying that you can get up to 18 days of standby time and up to seven hours of talk time. The latter does sound about right, but if you're heavily relying on 4G, you'll be able to get between two and four days out of this on a single charge. So how does it compare against the 2660? The 2780 comes with a more capable processor and a smarter operating system that has its own app store. There's also a USB-C port for charging and a five megapixel fixed focus camera. It also comes with Wi-Fi hotspot functionality, which the 2660 lacks. But the 2660's interface is more simple and straightforward and generally speaking, it's just a more basic feature phone. So it comes down to what you wanna do. Do you still need some of the smart features that we heavily rely on these days on our smartphones? In that case, the 2780 makes perfect sense. But if you want something more simple and you just want like a burner phone equivalent or to completely detox out of the tech world, then the 2660 makes sense for you. Now I'd love to hear from you. What do you guys think of the 2780? And do you prefer it in concept to the 2660? Let me know in the comments down below. You can check out my video going into details about the 2660 here or check out my other content here. Thank you for watching. Please don't forget to share, like, and subscribe and I shall see you in the next one.